extreme detailed line art with Greg Solo. It's gonna bust some stuff out right now on Nail School. All right, Greg, talk to us about this set from Carly Ritchie, UK uh, mentor. What are you gonna do? She's an amazing artist. So I wanted to, again, I don't, I don't want to make this difficult. Yeah. I want to be able to just copy uh, the line pattern that she did. I want to be able to show you guys how to get straight lines, how to get the right detail, and uh, I think you're gonna love the way this video basically puts it into perspective so that you guys can execute the same level of detail when you're offering it to your clients. Yeah, it's a pretty sick design, yeah. the whole combination with the line art and then the other stuff that you're gonna show wow. after afterwards. Are you ready? I'm pumped, bro. Let's do it. Okay, what we wanna do first is we're gonna push Tracy's cuticles back What's gonna do is just going to expose a little bit more natural nail. And then what we wanna be able to do is all of that protein growth, we wanna be able to remove it by tickling it away with our electric file. So really important to get into an overgrip position so that I could pull her skin back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the cuticle area at 3000 RPMs. I'm just going to lightly tickle, tickle, tickle. And then once I get around, I'm going to feather, as you can see, I'm gonna feather away the shine from corner to corner. What I like to do is use zone one of the barrel to get tight. This also, as you can see, gives me the opportunity to pull away her skin here so that I can get tight into that area. And if I need to get into the corner, I can come over the top and again, yeah, be as gentle as possible. We're going to remove shine from the surface of the nail. And then what I wanna be able to do is use swipe and clean the surface of the nail to remove oils and contaminants, and again, dust, and anything that's going to lead uh, to a disruption of any type of really, really good bonding. So once we have removed the shine from the nail, you can see that it actually turns a chalky white. This is going to set us up for a protein bond. Now, what I wanna be able to do to ensure that I have great adhesion is I'm going to put one coat from cuticle to free edge. I'm going to continue on all 10 nails. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to come back and add one more coat. Once I am done, the nail is prepped and ready for application. So what we wanna be able to do is we're going to take a nail form. I'm going to take the tab. I'm going to place it underneath this is going to give it some really good support. So you can see, I'm going to bend it. One of the things I do when I'm doing a coffin shaped nail is I like to pinch the whole front end, just like this. I'm going to open this up. Notice how I'm actually holding the form. Now, in order for me to get really, really good application, I'm going to notice I'm gonna come in and I use the underside of my finger to slide it up. That way it actually touches the underside of her free edge, and you notice I'm gonna secure it from here. This is going to set me up so that I have the perfect form application for a coffin nail. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use cover tilt. And the reason why I wanna use cover tilt is I need a color that's going to stand out. I need something that's gonna not only cover the natural nail, I need a strong, dark, natural color that's going to make this army green radiate. Okay, I'm gonna break this into two steps. I'm gonna build the free edge first and then I'm going to overlay it. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to use my signature series brush to get a nice even pearl. Now what I wanna do is I wanna drain the excess from the top. This is going to allow me, when I set it down, to maneuver it like clay. So as soon as I get it down, what I wanna be able to do is I'm going to use my brush to actually stretch the length. So you can see how I've brought it out to this point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the body of the brush to walk it right up, flush to the natural nail. I find it easier for me to establish length first and then it makes it easier for you to walk it up and get it tight 
and again, even and flush to the natural nail. If I need to stretch it out, I can use the body of the brush just to brush it out to the area that I need. Okay, perfect. Once I have established the right length, we're going to get right into our overlay. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to get one pearl that's going to be able to cover the whole body and establish a incredible structure through the center and all the way through to the tip. What I want to be able to do is use a lot of liquid and then again, I'm going to bounce to get the pearl that I want and with that wet consistency, I'm going to set it right here to the back and what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to allow this to level around the perimeter while I'm juggling the product down. As soon as it gets past the stress area, notice where I'm brushing it. I'm brushing it from the front. I do not want to attack the top. This is going to create the perfect seal around the body of the nail. You can see around the whole perimeter of the cuticle area while keeping that incredible shape. I want it to self level into perfection. This is going to eliminate ledges from building up around the cuticle area. Once I've applied the body, what I could do is I can get another bead. This is going to be my blending bead and I can set my brush backwards right here. I'm going to connect it to that existing pearl. I'm going to blend it right up into the body and then I'm going to use the body of my brush and balance it all the way through to the tip. Since I've already established the perfect length and shape, all I have to do is use the body to blend it into perfection. As you can see, I've established the perfect coffin shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the form from Tracy's finger. And we're gonna file this into shape and I'm gonna get ready to show you guys how to lay in lines so that your clients are blown away. Okay, once the nail has been filed and finished, we're gonna go ahead and take our custom mission control paint over the surface. But the first thing I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to protein bond the surface. That way the paint is going to bond extremely well. We're gonna go through all 10 nails and then this particular mix, this army green mix, is a combination between Fizz, Solar, Giant, Clutch, Clash, and Overdrive. What I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to get a really nice amount. And what I like to do is I like to start close to the back and just kind of pull through just to get a nice even application all the way through and then I could just touch up a little bit more and one of the things I like to do to get a perfect cuticle area is just kind of bounce around the back end to try to get it as close to the skin without touching and then as soon as I get all the way around then I can actually start to brush it through and that's going to give us a really nice tight application, but you can see how well the color covers when you're using cover taupe as your foundation. I'm going to go inside the light for a minimum of 60 seconds. It's the first coat. You have to ensure that the paint is going to dry extremely well to the surface of the enhancement. Once we're done establishing this color as our foundation, when we start to do our line work, we can do five second freezes in order to get through the design without it moving out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to touch my brush. And again, if there's areas on the side that need to be detailed, what I'm going to do, this is when you're going to be able to come through and just to make sure your edges are absolutely perfect. Again, yeah, just touching up my brush and using this to make sure that my edges are flawless. And since it's a really thin amount, I'm going to quickly get it inside the light. We're going to quickly get it inside the light. It doesn't have to be long because the first coat has already been established. 
going to get in for a minimum of 30 and we're going to get right to our line work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dab of overdrive and I'm just going to place this on the tile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from this surface here so that I have great coverage on the end of my micro detailer. Okay, so what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to get a line all the way down through the center from here to here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the brush up and in order for me to be able to do this, I need to be able to work as vertical as I possibly can. I'm not laying the brush this way, I'm setting it down and then I'm using the tip of the brush to literally just go right through the center and we're going to load it up all the way through. I'm gonna to continue to roll the brush through the paint. And then again, I'm just going to start from the top because I need to be able to establish a level of thickness through this line. And you're going to notice as I continue to draw all the way through, I'm trying to keep my brush as vertical as I can. And I'm able to trace a nice line from cuticle all the way to the center of the tip. Now, what I wanna be able to do so that I don't mess this up, let's go ahead and get this inside the light, and again, for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Tracy's gonna come out, and again, the line is frozen. It's not going to move. Now what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to add detail. So I'm going to run my brush again through the paint right here. I'm going to load it up. And we're going to start from the top right here. And what I want to be able to do is run a line all the way down to the side from this corner to this point. And we want to be able to do the same on the opposite side. I'm gonna run my brush through the paint to load it up. And what I'm doing again is just at a slight angle, I wanna be able to run my brush all the way down the side to a point that matches up to the opposite side. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, all right? But again, you want it to be within the same area. And then what I wanna be able to do is I wanna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to get my brush and what we want to be able to do is we're going to run it from this point all the way down to there and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to get it from there and I'm just going to bring it all the way out to that point. Again, we're just running it down the side and we're getting it as close to meeting that edge as we possibly can. Once we're done, we're gonna get back inside the light and again, freeze for five seconds. The best part about using the micro detailer and the paints is if you guys do line work, remember all you have to do is freeze it for five and you can continue to work without having to worry about smudging your lines. So what we wanna be able to do now is from this point, again, with the tip of my brush, with a very, very light contact, what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to run this all the way down to the corner and I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. From here, I'm starting from here, and again, with light touch, I'm running it all the way down to the corner so that you guys can see. Before we do the rest of the work, I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush and run another line that's going to run absolutely parallel to that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to run it parallel to the opposite line, just like that. Once we have established parallel lines, we're gonna get it inside the light. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to continue to add all the detail. I'm going to add one line from this corner all the way to this point right here. I'm going to take my brush. And again, once I load my brush, in order for you to get the right thickness, it's all about pressure. I'm going to start right here, and all I'm going to do is run my brush with light pressure with the tip to get the line thickness that I need to join right to that point. 
Once we've established that, let's go ahead and get it inside the light for five seconds. Let's just go ahead and continue adding the fine detail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way to here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna bring this all the way to here. And what we wanna be able to do is again, freeze it inside the light for a minimum of five seconds. Okay. So one of the things that I've noticed that Carly has done is she's added all kinds of fine detail around the edges. So to get those really fine lines, again, you wanna be able to run, what you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to run your brush through. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a really fine line right here, parallel to that line. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, I'm using the very, very tip of my brush. I'm laying it down and all I'm trying to do is just drag it so that it's parallel to that line. And then I noticed that she's added some detail right through the body. So again, what we want to be able to do is add one line here. One line here. And then with just the same amount of separation, one line here, one line here, and then just one, maybe a little bit closer. And then again, one of the things I do in order to get really good balance is I try to just notice how I'm balancing my finger on top and I'm running the brush down. So you can see me positioning my hand while I'm dragging it down, trying to get it as tight as we possibly can. Okay, once we've established that, let's get it back inside the light so we don't mess it up. Five more seconds. Let's go ahead and run our brush and what we're going to do is we're just going to run some real fine lines across. And what I wanna be able to do is use the edge of my brush. Again, notice how I set it down and all I'm doing is just kind of dragging all the way through. Carly stays within the line, mine's going all the way out to the outside. Just a hair of a difference. But again, trying to replicate her look. I have enough paint on the brush that I'm gonna be able to go back and add the detail that I want. Again, right through, lining my brush all the way from side to side, using the whole entire micro detailer to get all the way from one side to the other, okay? So once we've established those lines, then what I wanna be able to do is just add the real fine detail. And again, by taking one line here, all the way down to the side. Again, the same thing on the opposite end with really, really fine balance all the way to this point. Let's go ahead and get that inside the light again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Clear Sculptor in the Precision Applicator Tube, and I'm just going to place a dab right here. And right here. Just a dot, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my rhinestone tool, I'm just going to set it right here and then I'm going to get another stone and I'm going to place it right here. And then if you need to move it, you can use the opposite side of the tool for perfect positioning. Oops. Once we've established the perfect positioning, let's go ahead and get that inside the light to freeze it into place. I'm now going to take finished gel and I'm gonna work around the stones and seal the design.
Let's go ahead and get that inside the light for a minimum of one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the set. You guys are gonna love the final look.